everybody. Good morning, everybody. I am Vanessa Wehby. I work at Colette in partnership marketing, um, and I work very closely with Arda and I'm very happy to work with a lot of the contests that we run with you members. Um, and joining me today is Diane Eustace, as Kendra said, the winner of last year's um, The World is Your Classroom contest. Um, to give you a little background on Diane, she retired in 2013 after a 30-year career, mostly teaching elementary music with Edmonton Public Schools. Um, and Diane is the definition of a lifelong learner and a lifelong traveler. Um, mm -hmm. Since retirement, she's gone off to Africa to mentor teachers in Burundi English School. Um, and she does a lot of travel by bicycle to places like the Oregon Coast, Canadian Rockies, the East Coast of India, um, but most recently, she just came back from her Colette tour um, through Egypt and Jordan. Um, and as I mentioned, she was the um, she was the winner of our contest last year. So in a minute, I will play the video of um, her entry because last year we asked submissions to be entered via um, short video or a short um, blurb about people's dream trips and who their dream companion was to go with them. Um, and Diane's video won with over 200 votes from ARTA members. We left it up to members to vote. Um, and it was one of my favorite videos. So welcome, Diane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Let me play the video and we'll get going. Let's see. Hello, I'm Diane Eustace, and I'm ready to behold the great pyramids of Giza, to sample the cuisine of Cairo, to hear the call of Bekia from men asking residents to hand over their old belongings, to listen to the muezzin give their call to prayer, to travel the Nile River and visit Luxor in the Valley of the Queens, to follow in the footsteps of Moses and climb Mount Sinai. I'm ready to marvel at the lost city of Petra, to travel on the back of a camel across the Wadi Rum Desert and sleep under the stars in a Bedouin camp, to travel <laughs> below sea level and bathe in the azure waters of the Dead Sea and take a day trip to Jerusalem. Nancy is my best friend. She's always on time, easygoing, up for anything, uncomplaining, spontaneous, generous, culturally sensitive, and she's turning 70. I am passionate about lifelong learning, physically and mentally prepared for this journey, excited to celebrate Nancy's 70th birthday, and I'm ready. Thank you. And here's something to make you smile. Not everyone thinks Cleopatra is beautiful, but that's the way Julius sees her. Amazing. Yeah. All right, Diane. So I got to tell you, you have become a little local celebrity in our office. I've shown everybody this video um, and we all love you. And everyone's been asking me if you've traveled yet. Um, and if you did, how was it? So you got to tell us, did it live up to the expectation? If you can hear me. I think you're just muted right now, Diane. Sorry. Hey, I'm unmuted. Yeah. I had to change from Wi-Fi to data. No problem. Wow. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I missed that in the middle. Uh, no I'm problem. up here in the I'm in the mountains right now, and so I didn't know what would be the best uh, kind of internet to use. <laughs> no problem. Okay. So I um I was just telling you that you are a little local celebrity in our office and everyone loved your video and all of oh. my coworkers have been asking if you've traveled yet um and they want to hear all about your trip. I know a couple of them are on here today. So okay. did it live up to the expectation? You know, it was more than Nancy and I could ever have dreamed of, really, because um it, it just was like a whirlwind of events for 15 days. Uh, just 
everything went so well and so smoothly. You know, the weather cooperated. Uh, we were so well supported by Colette wherever we went. Um, the people were wonderful. You know, we had no troubles wherever we went. And even at one point, uh, we were just like a stone's throw from Israel. But there was no impact from the war that's going on right now. So that was wonderful. And the people are the people, no matter uh, if they're Muslim or Christian. Uh, they just said, you know, that we're just trying to live. And uh, so Absolutely. it was an absolutely fabulous experience. <laughs> That's amazing. So did you, how did you feel safety wise? Did you have concerns going into it? And kind of how did you feel while you were there? Yeah, I didn't have any concerns. And I know Nancy didn't, but our family sure did. And, uh, you know, some people thought my son thought, nope, I shouldn't go, you know, why am I looking for trouble? That would be my mom's <laughs> sense too. But I have to say that um, um, when we were, anytime we were out in a big public area, we had a security guard with us. And so even though, and like, we didn't really notice at first that we had a security guard, it wasn't announced, but there he was. And um, it was, that also made that extra degree of caution but I think that, you know, they recognize e easily that we are tourists and uh, tourism is so important for the economy that I don't think um, they want to involve us in any of those struggles. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know this was your first guided tour, correct? It was. Uh, up until this point, I've traveled all over the world. Um, you know, doing my own planning for India or Vietnam or um, cycling all these different places, but um, not knowing enough about the uh, about Egypt and Jordan. And because it is in the Middle East where there's always conflict, one of our tour guides said that. He said, if you're waiting for a time to go to the Middle East when there's not a war, you can wait your whole lifetime. <laughs> and uh, so I highly recommend it because I wouldn't have, you know, the, the places that we were taken, um, maybe I wouldn't even have thought of, of going there. And also the expertise of our guides um, and explaining the things that we are going to see really helped too, because, you know, sometimes you just go and you might have your phone and you're just uh, using the QR code to get some information about what you're seeing, but actually having somebody that studied and taken the time to appreciate uh, the culture and share it with others was really beneficial. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Yeah. One more thing is that I, I'm not an early person. Well, Nancy is, but I'm not. And <laughs> Well, uh, we all call it the call it uh, tour guides always got us to the different sites early in the morning when it wasn't as crowded. And that's a real benefit, too. You know, so even though I didn't want to get up at six in the morning, it was well worth <laughs> the, you know, being able to explore everything and not be in, in long lineups. Absolutely. I always say I'm not a morning person either, but on vacation, I will be up whenever I need to be to, to get the best views or the best spots. It's the only time That's I right. can get up really early. <laughs> yeah. Um, so give us a kind of a day in the life on tour. Okay. Well, uh, the day before, uh, our, our first tour guide in Egypt, his name was Mohammed. Uh, so the day before, Mohammed would give us the time that we needed to uh, be at the tour bus and whether or not we were staying like most of the time we would stay a several nights in one place so we didn't have to repack and uh, so he'd go over what is it that we would be seeing the next day and then some sort of suggestions for maybe what we needed to wear making sure that we had our hats or <laughs> our proper walking shoes and uh, then we would get up and uh, get our stuff ready. We had a little, I had a little backpack. Uh, we'd go downstairs and we'd have breakfast most of the time. I'd say all the time the breakfasts were included. So we'd have a breakfast and off we go to the uh, tour bus. 
And um, it was a wonderful thing. We only had eight people. So we had a very small uh, bus and lots of room for us to spread out. And uh, all along the way, Muhammad would um, tell us about, you know, more information as we went and point out things along the way. Once we got to the site, we had these little um, ear, <laughs> ear sets that we would put in so that Muhammad could speak to us as we were touring around. And if it was uh, noisy or there's other people speaking at the same time, we could hear his voice. And so um, he would take us through some of the site and then he would give us time to tour it on our own and explore it and take photos and uh, maybe point out a place to sit and have a coffee or lunch. And uh, then we would get back on the bus and usually travel to another site and uh, you know explore that in a similar way. Uh, some days we went to um, different places like a jewelry site or a rug site or carvings or you know and uh with no pressure to buy if we wanted to buy something we could buy something and uh one of the men on the tour he just loved rugs so he bought four of them <laughs> we were always amazed at him and uh so at each site that we would go to uh, Mohammed would pick a couple of the street vendors to come to our bus because in Egypt they're always trying to get you to buy something. So it was less stressful for us just to have two people to come to the bus with show us what they had and then if we wanted to we could buy something. Uh, in the evening then uh, our group would usually met together. We'd go for a drink whether people drank alcohol or not. Um, a drink in the lounge, and then uh, we would have dinner together. So we had uh, many dinners together. It was that was really nice, right? They were very friendly people, and we're from all over the United States. A couple from Japan, and then Nancy and I were from Canada. So uh, yeah, and then it was you know get to bed. Oh, and Muhammad would lay out what was going to happen on the next day. He'd come and join us at the end of dinner tell us what we were going to be doing and uh, then the whole day would be repeated <laughs> the next day. So how did you find the pacing of the tour? Uh, it was a very fast paced uh, trip and looking back on it we did take an extra day in Cairo on the way there and that was really good because uh, traveling from Edmonton, Alberta is a three flight trip <laughs> and it's many hours. So we had enough uh, time ahead of time just to get a, you know, a, cl a climate, just used to the time change and everything. And at the end, we did wish we had added on a couple of extra days because our resort was so beautiful and we could have used a couple more days there. But um, it was, it was good for the two of us. We never thought it was uh, too much to handle. And I think if you really didn't want to go, you could just have waited in the bus and not done everything. Um, but there were some early mornings. One morning, we, we had to have our luggage out by 3.45 in the morning so that we could get to the airport in time to fly to our next destination. So um, yeah, a lot of travel was done by flying, which was very different than uh you know by bus so um yeah i the pa the pace was fast the terrain wasn't too bad except at petra and nancy and i chose to uh take a tour guide and he took us up through the mountains and we were scrambling like mountain goats <laughs> <laughs> up to the top but um you know the other people maybe they weren't as active as we were and so they just took things at a slower pace Absolutely. So you found it was you made you and Nancy made the best of your uh, free time and kind of went off on your own when you could and um, and found that you could do things separate from the group along with the group during your free time. Yes, we didn't. I didn't know if that would be allowed, like if there would be some, some I don't know, insurance coverage or something. But uh, there didn't seem to be. And ahead of time, you know, we explored Cairo a little bit just by foot close to the hotel. 
Um, and just to get a, you know, a sense of what we're in for ahead of time. Uh, and that to me was really good too, just to get our bearings, you know, it's kind of like taking um, those hop on hop off buses when you first get to a city. I always like to do that because then you get a lay of the land, you know, like which way is north, south, east, west and <laughs> things like that. But it's not uh, for the faint of heart, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's. It is an active tour in that you're moving a lot and you're getting on the bus and getting off the bus and you're touring here and you're looking at these things. Um, and also those early mornings could be could be a rush. Absolutely. And that's at club we have activity levels. So we this is a little higher activity activity level than some of our other tours. So we try to match up travelers to um the best activity level for them to make sure that everyone's comfortable and moving at a pace that that works for them. So you're you're mm -hmm. on the high activity level. You you and your mountain, yeah. Diane. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. So, what was one of your highlights from Egypt and Jordan? Oh, well, one of the highlights in Egypt was of course to visit the Great Pyramid and to uh, climb up to the top. I was a little nervous ahead of time because I, oh, you, we heard, oh, it's claustrophobic. And, um, but when I was young, like maybe 10 or 11 years old, I thought I wanted to be an archeologist. And uh, that was one of those dreams, you know, I wanna go inside a pyramid and climb in and see what it would have been like. So it was exciting to do that, but more exciting than that was to actually go and see King Tut, <laughs> Tutankhamun, uh, in his tomb. I mean, there he is, and that's in the Valley of the Kings, which is just not to be missed, it was just overwhelmingly exciting because they, it's so well preserved. The artifacts are still in the tomb. Whereas in the Great Pyramid, we climb all the way up to the top and it's empty. <laughs> so that was uh, kind of sort of disappointing, but we knew it was going to be like that. We knew there wouldn't be any artifacts left up in the tomb. But so when we got to the Valley of the Kings and we're walking in and the paintings and the color and, you know, there's King Tut's mummified head and his feet. And I mean, he's still in situ. It was so exciting. Uh, another highlight in Egypt had to be uh, cruising down the Nile. You know, we, you know, read about it, how the, the Nile is so fertile and it's this delta. And sure enough, you know, I have this one photo and it's just remarkable. I just, I was up on the top deck and I just marveled at the Nile. So that was great. And then in uh, Jordan, it's remarkable. Wadi Rum the whole idea of Lawrence of Arabia and, uh, <laughs> uh, and the, it was so different. Egypt is um, so much more populated and it's noisier and, you know, there's lots of people around you and we get to Jordan and you can see I've climbed to the top of the mountain in Petra there in the photo. Um, it, there's more space and, uh, the terrain, honestly, it's just like a moonscape. It's no wonder they filmed um, different movies up there. It, it, just incredible. Uh, so going to Wadi Room in the desert and actually, you know, being where Lawrence Arabia was to go to Petra and see the treasury and the monastery and do all that climbing like mountain goats. And then, um, the most, you know, it, it's a religious experience because both the Muslim people and the Christian people um, have very important sites. Uh, one of them is the place where John the Baptist baptized Jesus. And that was the River Jordan was, you know, it's, it, it can't help but, but be hallowed ground. And then uh, going up to the, uh, the mountain where Moses brought all the people out of Egypt and he brings them to Mount Nebo and you can see the promised land out below them. And he says, <clears throat> here is the land that God has given us to live. And uh, the people go and live there and Moses dies at Mount Nebo. 
So though, oh, and one more, the Dead Sea. <laughs> that was uh, another highlight because, you know, you read about these things and uh, you think, wow, uh, do these things really exist? And there I am on the right-hand side. Nancy and I have gone, there's a, a certain way that you bathe in the Dead Sea. First, you go in for 10 minutes because it's so salty. And for sure, there's just no way you can touch the ground. And then you come out and you cover yourself in the mud from the Dead Sea. And then they give you handfuls of salt that you rub into your skin. And then you go back and, and take off all the muddy, salty stuff. And, you know, I'm, we thought for sure we looked 10 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, and the cooking class, oh my goodness. The cooking class, uh, we all were involved and we all got to eat it. And when I came back home, I did a presentation at my church and uh, I re I cooked the same dishes that we learned in the cooking class in Jordan. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so that was really great. And the picture in the middle is a picture we were invited to the uh, home, a person's home in Jordan to uh, see how, you know, just to see how they live and they shared their customs with us and food and the children performed for us. So that was really, really different. Didn't expect it. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. How did you find the, the food? Did you try a lot of- You know, food? I did. And I am a vegan, so, um, I, I, I already knew, you know, you always hear about falafel and I eat lots of hummus and things like that. But in Egypt, they have a dish called fool and everybody eats it in the morning. And it's these beans that you top, it's delicious <laughs> with all these toppings and it was really good. Um, so I found plenty of things to eat no matter where I went. Uh, one of the couples was Hindu and so they were vegetarian. So it's a little different than vegan. So, um, but she was very discerning. And when we were on board the ship, she had a, a little chat with the chef and he would always make sure there were lentils and rice and lots of vegetables for us to eat. So that was great. And uh, when we were in Wadi Rum, we had uh, one of our meals was they had baked uh, food in the ground and then opened it up. So I did I have to admit, I did have, I had to try it. They had, there was lamb and uh, chicken. And I thought, okay, for, for my friends at home, I'll try the lamb and the chicken. Uh, it was very good. I just wasn't used to meat at that point. So I guess what I'm saying is the, the diet was really varied. So it didn't matter if you were a meat eater or a non-meat eater. Uh, we had plenty of different kinds of foods to taste. Um, also, there was always lots of food. Like <laughs> Nancy and I didn't spend very much money outside of what was provided at breakfast and uh, dinner. Some, a lot of the dinners seemed to be included. Like, you know, when we were on the, the boat cruise, everything was all included. Uh, we had a wonderful dinner uh, courtesy of Colette on the first night. That welcome dinner was so fabulous. <laughs> and uh, so we didn't find we were spending a lot of money and, and uh, also the prices were reasonable for food, I thought. So that's a really a hearty recommendation. It doesn't matter whether you drink or you don't drink alcohol, uh, whether you're vegan, vegetarian, meat eater, there's plenty for you to eat. And uh, we, none of us got sick on the tour. So that was good too, right? We were very particular about having uh, bottled water though. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I know you mentioned to me earlier that you um, utilize the guide for that collect provided for tipping and um, right for currency. That, yes. Yeah, so we got when we uh, shortly before we departed, we got a little kit. And inside this kit was uh, a paper copy of all the destinations that we were going to. And um, just some, you know, information about tipping was the, the most important information to us. Because when you're in Egypt, you get money, but you can't take that money out of Egypt. You need to spend it all while you're there. 
And so we would count at the end of the tour of our tour time in Egypt, then Nancy and I calculated, okay, they say we need to have this much money for our driver and our tour guide and all the different people along the way. And then we went and made sure we had enough cash and we passed out the cash to everybody. And we wouldn't have had a clue. Is it 10%? Is it 5%? We know how much money to give anybody. So that was really, really good. And um, the American people, they just used American money. And everybody was very happy to get a, an American dollar tip, honestly. Like that, <laughs> that seemed to be the number one winner. In Jordan, it's not required to tip, but we did tip. And uh, so we kind of used the idea from Egypt uh, to go ahead and tip the other people. It's mostly for your guide and your driver because they are, you know, going beyond and above because they're, you know, they, they're away from their family. They're with us for the entire time. Right. And um, so that guide really, really helped us. And even uh, afterwards, I, I use an app called Polar Steps to record my journey. And then after you're done, you print it out and you get a, a book. And it also helped me to, to remind me of the places we went and traveled if I couldn't remember. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So if someone, if you had to set some expectations about somebody that was going on this tour, what would you tell them? Uh, I would tell them to pack light I uh, because you're going to be moving between places and um, coming from Canada, we had three flights, so we, uh, we did a carry on, so we never lost our luggage. And then it made it very easy then if we had to pack up and go to the next place, we only had that one suitcase. Um, you always have to have a hat because it is, uh, even in February, it might only be 20 degrees of a high, but it's, the sun is still beating down on your head. So you like that. Uh, you need to have uh, good uh, walking shoes. Running shoes for me uh, are the best things. So um, that's really important. Um, I always pick a color story. Nancy laughs at me. Mine was uh, navy, white, and a little dash of yellow because you can see my hat there. <laughs> uh, so that was really important if you needed things to be cleaned there was always laundry along the way if that's really important to you um, what else about it uh, it did cool off in the evening so um, some sort of a light jacket but honestly February they had warned us that oh it might go down to about 10 uh, oh, that's 10 Canadian degrees, 50 Fahrenheit. And, uh, but it, that didn't last long because the majority of our travel was done early in the morning until four o'clock. And so, you know, you just have to have layers. And also really important is to carry a backpack so that you can take, <laughs> put that jacket on or take that jacket off or your, uh, your hat. Um a uh, crossbody bag for your your purse um, so that you know you have money and I, I'd say that's about it just just pat, travel light you know the color story and uh, <laughs> not too many shoes the shoes you walk in and the shoes that you are dressed in right a pair of sandals and a pair of walking shoes the so. shoes are what get you when you pack let's take up the most room yeah. as an infamous overpacker I've learned that <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, um, there you can always buy something. So we had a an, on the cruise, we had an Egyptian night. So we had opportunities to uh, shop and they had clothing like I bought in the buyer for five dollars US. But um, so there, you know, I needed a long dress. I needed to look like an Egyptian. And so it didn't cost me a lot of money to do that. Uh, even with the souvenirs, uh, because I was traveling in such a small suitcase, I only managed to bring back a scarf, a pair of earrings, and this lovely platter that uh, the these women, we went to um, a place where uh, women are, um, they make pottery and different kinds of crafts. 
anyway, so I know you can't bring much back, but if you were the gentleman who bought all the carpets, <laughs> he just had them sent back. So if you want to buy something big, they'll send it back for you. <laughs> Good to know he wasn't. And American money. <laughs> American <laughs> money, you know, take 50. And I was surprised. I just went to the Toronto Dominion Bank in Canada and I needed American money. And she said, what, what bills do you want? And I said, ones, please. I'm going to be tipping. And uh, so that was really handy. Amazing. Amazing. So is it safe to say that you would do guided travel again, Diane? Uh, it's an absolute must. So my husband, um, he used to be against it. <laughs> and because uh, he's you know, traveled quite a bit of the world, but now he's 71. He's had a hip replacement. And um, I don't think he has the energy to do the traveling like we used to like we go to a place and then we'd be booking the next night and, and traveling there. And um, so we are going to, we're just deciding now, where are we going to choose? Should we do the Europe, a Europe trip? And, uh, or should we do something like Morocco? We have a couple of friends going with Colette in September and they were so pleased to hear that I'd done this Colette tour and they said, we're going to, we're taking Colette. They are also uh, educators. And uh, so they they were happy to know that the hotels are all of the hotels that they chose were just wonderful. Like, you know, more than we expected. Um, the first place we were in, Nancy said, this is the nicest hotel I've ever stayed in. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was really nice. And, you know, they, yeah, they just went above and beyond. So we are going to do that. We're, uh, we know we'd like to cruise the up to Alaska. I know Colette, I think, does that. I'm not sure. But uh, we, I would like to take him on one of the small group excursions, which this one was. So I think they take up to 20 people or something. And uh, you really get to know the other people on the tour. And that's something, uh, as an older couple, it's kind of fun, right? That you're not just talking to your spouse or trying to make conversations somewhere else. And um, this was the group we were with, with all of them, even the Japanese people who, you know, they spoke better English than we did Japanese. <laughs> but um, uh we did really get along uh, nicely with. And like I said, we'd go for uh, drinks together and, uh, you know, we'd meet up or we'd shop. And, um, you know, and if, if you have a husband that doesn't like shopping too much, <laughs> he usually just gives you like five minutes. Okay, we're done, right? And whereas this time, you know, we had companions to uh, shop with. So that was nice. So for sure, another guided tour. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. And yeah, just to speak on our small group exploration tours, um, we max them out at 24 travelers. Um, so, but we run them, as Diane said, she had eight people on her tour. So if you're booked, you're most likely going to be traveling no matter how many people are on the tour, um, which is great because you still have companions with you um, no matter where you are in the world. Um, and it brings you a little bit closer to the culture and you get a little bit more tailored experiences for smaller groups, which is amazing. Oh, absolutely. You know, and you know, we, I had no idea we were going to be such a small group and uh, good on call it to keep running it because, you know, the people in where we were going, the Middle East are depending on tourism for their livelihood right and um, you know in uh, our tour guides words you're not they're always going to be at war you know so to be in a part of a small group that has a tour guide that's that has everything all set ahead of time another wonderful thing is that if they find out that any of the animals for example the camel <laughs> the camel ride if they were any of the owners of the camels were mistreating the camels Colette won't deal with that like they made sure that um, everybody that they interact with is um, is doing the best that they can uh, environmentally and to keep the animals safe so that was really really good to know too <laughs> absolutely absolutely um, okay, switching gears a little bit, um, 
I'd like to take this time to announce our next giveaway. Um, since Diane was the winner of last year, we figured this would be the perfect time to announce this year's giveaway. Um, we are doing a summer fun sweepstakes this year. Um, so we're opening it up to any ARTA member that wants to um, submit a form. We can go on collect, www.collect.com slash ARTA. Um, you can enter here. You'll get a form just to fill out some basic information. And this year we are asking you pick from any of these four tours. Um, and these are a mix of our small group, small group exploration tours, which max out at 24, um, like Journey Through Egypt and Jordan that Diane just went on, um, are exploring Iberia. And we have two classic tours, which max out at 44 travelers, um, tropical Costa Rica and the countryside of the Emerald Isle. Wow. So that is starting today, June 4th through July 6, 2024. Um, the contest is live. If anyone has any questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat. For me, Diane, the contest, anything. <laughs> oh, maybe not the chat. Is the chat working, Kendra? It is working, but it doesn't look like anyone has any questions right now. That's okay. We're so specific. That's <laughs> oh, uh, we have someone asking, Diane, what did you use? Uh, use, that's all they said. What did I use for? Yeah, maybe um, if that person wants to expand a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> What did I use? Like the airline? <laughs> One second. She said she's typing as fast as she can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I know. Some messages that are saying the chat's disabled. Oh. oh. Sure. Yeah. People can also use the Q&A function. There's a button at the bottom. And if you use that, you'll be able to... Um, type some questions there. Or if you raise your hand, I can also allow people to talk if you want to um, use the raise hand function. Oh, okay. I, I saw the uh, question. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, okay. Now, first off, the, the name of that app is, it's a great app. It's called Polar Steps. All one word, Polar Steps. It doesn't cost any money to use. Um, and what I use it, it's like a travel diary. So I would take all my pictures were taken on my Samsung phone. And that at the end of the day, I would jot down a paragraph on what we had done that day. Well, try to limit it to a paragraph. And, uh, and then at the end, you can sit down and um, you decide which photos you would like to keep and which you do not want to keep. What's nice about the Polar Steps app is that you can share your trip with other people. So some people don't aren't on Facebook. And uh, so this is a nice way. It's just private. You choose who it is that you want to see your story. And uh, I know I followed my girlfriend as she was traveling around on a bicycle through uh, Taiwan in that way. It was really interesting, right? There's photos and you get a little bit of an explanation and you see what they're up to. And then the other part of the question had something to do with for your meds regarding the food. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, I'm only on two medications <laughs> and one is for uh, acid reflux and the other is uh, blood pressure medication. So <clears throat> uh, uh, there were nothing, oh, ahead of time, we did do the, um, oh, I forgot what that's called. Is that medicine you get from your doctor? You take it uh, one pill two weeks before you go, and then the second pill one week before you go to ensure that you don't have any intestinal issues. And uh, so I checked with the doctor, and the doctor said, yeah, that's a good suggestion. Um, the other thing is that I went to the pharmacist and I got a sleeping pill <laughs> for the way there and a sleeping pill for the way back, just two, because um, 
I'm, it's, you know, it's a long flight and our flights were like from Edmonton to Toronto, no, Edmonton to London, London to Cairo on the way back, Cairo, London, London, Vancouver. So nine and a half hours, it was really handy to have the sleeping pill. Um, I didn't take any other medication, not like when we were in India or when I spent the three months in other parts of Africa. This is not Africa like, like in the jungle. So there's plenty of bottled water. There are plenty of facilities to wash your hands. And um, so we didn't, we even ate like salads and vegetables. So we, we didn't have any problems with that. It's not CPRO. I can't remember what you call it, but it's some kind of a pill that you get from your doctor that helps with any stomach issues. I hope that helps. Do Corolla. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd just like to add in for the contest before we have any other questions that it is not required to submit any video or written submission this year. <laughs> All you have to do is fill out the form um, and pick your favorite trip and you will be submitted to win. And the winners are chosen at random. So we're doing it a little bit different this year, but definitely opening it up to anybody that wants to enter. That's an artist member. Right. <laughs> I know that uh, it was, it's so funny. You know, I, I have never won anything before. I'm just not, a, a honestly, before now, I never thought of myself as a winner. But I saw the contest and I thought, I'm going to win that contest. And I thought, I'm going to go to Egypt. And so um, it just kind of everything just fell into place. And it was challenging because, you know, the video had to get chosen and then we had to have people vote for us. So, uh, you know, getting your friends and family <laughs> to support you, we would be standing in the lineup like at a grocery store and we'd say, hey, <laughs> we're trying to go to Egypt. Would you vote for us? Anyway, so I think it. that's wonderful. <laughs> made it happen. Colette, <laughs> Colette has made it, yeah, certainly much more easy to enter and that you've chosen this Egypt and Jordan trip. I mean, I look at the others and I think, well, yeah, I like that idea too, but. <laughs> and someone asked, I um, yeah. they heard the street food in Jordan is great. Did you try any of it? Oh, yeah. Uh, we only had so little time to tr try the street food. I wanted to eat with my hands. And it was interesting that when uh, we first got there, our Jordanian tour guide, he took us for what, you know, he said this Jordanian dinner. And, um, but really, you know, we had forks and knives and it was French fries and what, some dips or whatever. But I looked at this other table where they were just had this mound of food and they were eating with their hands. So <laughs> uh, the only thing we had were these, um, I can't remember the name, but uh, there was a cheesy kind of a pancake, absolutely delicious. Or they would have, they'd sell French fries on the street, you know, hot. And oh, oh another thing I did have was pomegranate juice. For a dollar, you get this big glass of refreshing pomegranate juice. I love that. So um, we were just too well fed <laughs> to eat on the street. <laughs> anyway. It was uh, really remarkable and clean. Um, we we kind of had this idea that in Egypt, they don't really have uh, a garbage system. The, like, you know, with people taking away garbage because they have cats and dogs that come and eat all the garbage. But Jordan is uh, way different. It's, um, it's, I think it's just more affluent. Um, What's an interesting thing to me that I didn't know was that it was the Petra was the center of all trade because uh, it hooked up between the Mediterranean to the Sea of Galilee, the Dead Sea to the Red Sea. So all these traders had to pass by and uh, it continues to be a, a trade route. Uh, people are shipping oil and transporting things from uh, the Gulf into the Red Sea. And then once they get it out to the Red Sea, it can go to the rest of the world. So that affluence uh, helps the Jordanian people quite a bit compared to the Egyptian people. <laughs> 
I know I've said too many things. People have no questions, but I, I would think that like, just un, just be brave and bold and just enter the contest or um, pick a, a small group, group tour. And if your husband doesn't want to go, ask your friend. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Great. One of the questions I had was, um, will this be announced um, via email? And we will have it in our artifacts. Um, we'll have it up there for people to look at. We'll be posting it all over social media. So yeah, if you have friends that are interested, that are ARTA members, um, tell them all about it. We're really excited to partner with Colette to give out this trip again this year. Right. And it's great. Like uh, I have the ARTA benefit plan that includes all the travel. So that was, we didn't have to buy any extra travel insurance because, you know, call that, make sure you know, ensure that you have travel insurance when you're going. But because we have the wonderful benefit plan through ARTA, um, yeah, I didn't have to do anything extra. And um, I know in the past, uh, I was uh, cycling in France and um, I guess my bike went down and I hit my head. I had a concussion. Anyway, I spent a night in a hospital in France, and uh, which cost like $600. But I submitted my claim and uh, I was, it was totally covered. There was, there was no problem, not even boo <laughs> about this. So Arda, thank you very much for having this benefit plan, which is as a senior, uh, travel insurance can be very costly. We have people saying, thank you, Diane, moving Egypt and Jordan up on the bucket list. Um, and some people asking where they can see the contest. So I'll just type the answer um, there for those people, but it's www.collette.com slash Arda. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be right on the homepage. Yeah. And uh, well, another thing that maybe they don't know is that any of your trips, like you can go ahead of time and look and see when are they running. And that was important to Nan and I, and it would be to other people, like maybe, you know, like when is it that you can travel and are they running that trip to Costa Rica or, or wherever you want to go? And uh, so that really helped us uh, make a decision as to when to go. Um, Right. And so I didn't know that before, but this it's all there for you. <laughs> Absolutely. And we have links to all of the four offered trips. Um, so you can go right on to the, the website page and view the itinerary, view the dates for this year, next year, um, some even yeah. into 2026. Um, and if you want to do pre-post nights, we'll work with you on that. So um, but you can see it all on the itinerary page and on the Art of Landing page. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Any other questions, Kendra? Or are we? No, nothing else came in. Nope. Perfect. Good. Well, Great. thank you so much, Diane. Thank I Diane. appreciate this. This was amazing. Uh, <laughs> I know. I'm just, I once again, I am truly thankful. Wow. What an opportunity it was for me. And so, and that you're, you're offering another contest. I hope everybody <laughs> has as much fun as I did. <laughs> oh, you're amazing. And you have to keep me posted if you go on another trip. Okay. Well, I'll let you know. I haven't booked it yet, but we're, All right. we're just kind of finding the time. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Great.